Begin your knit hat by pulling the yarn out of the center or off of the side of your ball or cake of yarn. Next, you're going to wrap the yarn around both of the needles at the widest point, a little over half of the amount of stitches that you're going to be casting on. So for example, if I'm casting on 40 stitches, then half of that would be 20, and I'm going to add about five more wraps so that I have a little bit of extra yarn for a long tail. After you wrap your yarn around your needles, you're going to keep the spot where you ended and create a slip knot. You do this by creating a circle, and then you're going to pull the yarn through the center of the circle like this. So I'll show that again. So you're going to create a C or a little circle, and then the yarn that's on top is going to go through the middle of the loop in order to create a slip knot. Next, you can slip that knot onto your needle, and then you're going to make sure that the long tail is towards your tummy or towards your body, and that the ball of yarn is away from you. So I'm going to set that ball of yarn away from me and make sure that the long tail is towards my body. If the loop is on backwards, then you can simply pull it off and put it back on so the yarns are aligned. Now I'm going to show you how to cast on using two different methods. For this first method, you are going to be taking your left hand and you are going to be grabbing all of the yarns with your pinky ring and middle finger. You're also going to be putting your pointer finger and your thumb in between the two yarns, one that's the front and one that's the back. Next, you're going to touch your thumb and go from the outside in to grab the loop. And then you're going to take the outside of that second yarn and pull it through the center. And then you can pull the knot onto your needles, but not too tight. So again, I'm going to go from the thumb and then I'll go to the outside of the other finger and then I'll dip down. So basically you're always going on the outside of the yarn to grab a loop and then you point the needle down and take it off and this is how you can start to cast on using a regular cast on. Sometimes I think of my hand like a little knitting laser gun um, with my pointer finger and my thumb. That sometimes is a helpful way to remember how to do this. Again, you're just scooping the yarn from side to side and then pulling it through a loop. Feel free to slow this video down and watch it as many times as you need to because it's a little bit tricky when you first start, but before you know it, it will become very... Again, that's the long tail cast on, and that's a great place to start. If you do that, just make sure you have five to 10 extra stitches so that your hat fits. Next, I'm going to show you the German long tail cast on. I start again with a slip knot, and I'll put that onto my needle, and then I'm going to hold the yarn the same way that I did before with my three fingers grabbing all of the yarns, pointer on the back yarn, thumb on the front yarn. And this time, instead of going through the hole, I'm going to loop around and then go through the, the hole, and then I'm going to grab that outside yarn and go through a loop in the center. I had to practice this, practice this a lot before I got it, so it's okay if it takes a while. So again, going through and under the whole thing, and then going through this loop, grabbing the outside edge of that yarn, and then there's a little, a little tunnel right there that you can put the yarn through and then you just continue to repeat this. So bo try both types of cast on to decide which one that you want. This one's going to be a little stretchier and a little bit more comfortable but again the other one's going to be just fine. You're just going to want to have something closer to 45 to 50 stitches as opposed to 40 stitches. So again this German long tail cast on do between 40 to um, I should do an even number actually, um, 40 to 44, um, and for the other one, do closer to 50 stitches. So I'm going to continue doing whichever cast on I would like to for the amount of stitches that I would like. So in this case, I'm going to be doing 40, and you're just going to continue doing this cast on and let the yarn move across the cable of the, the needle. It'll be a little bit tight, but um, you can start to do this. You can keep track by counting your stitches and continue to cast on until you have the amount of stitches that's going to work for your hat. Expect this cast on process to take you a few times. A lot of times we'll cast on something, notice that we did something strange and then have to redo it. 
All right, now I've got my 40 stitches on my needle and I've got a little bit of a tail. We want about six to eight inches of tail. If you have more than that, you can kind of ball it up or you can trim it, but a lot of times you have to redo this, so it's helpful to make sure that uh, you have enough tail. Now, you're gonna make sure that all of your stitches are facing the center, so we don't want there to be a twist. It happens a lot that you start knitting a hat and you twist it and then it turns into this endless infinity loop. So make sure that all of your stitches are towards the center. And then I'm going to put the ball of yarn off to the left side because I'm going to be knitting with my left hand. You can also knit with your right hand. And then you're going to make sure that that yarn is coming from your right needle. And then I'm going to be wrapping my yarn around my pinky and then across my pointer finger like this. Find a way that works for you in the way that you like to wrap. But again, this is, this is how I like to do it. This is called continental knitting. The other way is English, where you throw with your right hand. And then this first stitch usually gets a little bit loose, so you want it to be nice and close to the edge. And then I'm going to go from left to right, and I'm going to create a cross with my knitting needles. Then I'm going to go down grab this loop that I've wrapped around the needle from my left hand, pull it through, and then I'm going to be taking that stitch off. Make sure that you take the stitch off of the needle. And that's my first knit stitch. I'll tug on my long tail to tighten things up a little bit, and then I'm gonna go from right to left, make an X, grab the yarn, wrap it around the needle, pull it through the loop, and then take the previous stitch off. So this is the knit stitch. It takes a bit to get comfortable with it. And like I said, there are a lot of different ways that you can hold the yarn or throw the yarn. Um, but I find this way to be really fast, easy, and a little bit more comfortable for my hands, even though it might feel a little awkward at the beginning. The way that you get good at this and that it becomes comfortable is just practice and time. So be patient with yourself and be ready and willing and accepting that you might have to start over with the cast on several times as you're knitting. So you're going to continue doing this and you're also going to play the little dance of knitting where you're going to be scooching the yarn as you go. Now I'm going to show you how to English style knit with the right hand. So here I'm doing the same thing, putting the needle underneath, and then I'm going to wrap the yarn around the needle, pull it through the loop forward, and then take the loop off. I'm going to scooch my, my stitches around so that it becomes easier for me to work. And then this is called throwing. So I'm throwing the yarn around the needle, and then I'm pulling it through the loop, and then taking the stitch off. So again, play with both of these, see which one you like. And where this stitch starts to come apart a little bit, like you can see here, just pull on that long tail. There's some fancy things that you can do in the future in order to uh, remove that, that space there. But for your first hat, try not to worry too much about it. We'll be able to weave that in at the end to tighten up that stitch a bit. And continue around. And this is all you're going to do for the next few hours or it could be several hours or maybe even days, <laughs> is knit around this. So I always wanna make sure that I'm starting with all of the stitches facing the center. Eventually this will turn into a hat and it will all sort of drop, but you are going to be stitching in the round until you have enough stitches for however tall you would like your hat. So if you want a shorter hat, you could do something like 10 inches. If you want a longer hat, you can do up to 13 or as long as you would like. You can decide whether or not you want a pom-pom at the end, but you're just going to continue this knit stitch all the way around your needles. So you will continue this process for quite a while. If you're a seasoned knitter, this will take you about a couple of hours. If you're new, it could take you a few days, um, hour each day or so. And then I am going to start noticing the structure of the yarn and the, and the hat. So I'm going to see on this side, I've got V's or hearts. So this is my outside. And then on the other side, I have C's or waves, and that is the pearl side. That's the side that's gonna touch my head. And then as I, pick up and set down my knitting, I'm going to always make sure that the working yarn is coming from my right needle, that I'm not twisting my stitches around. And then you'll continue this process on 
until you have the desired distance of fabric that you would like. So here I'm checking and I've got about nine and a half, almost 10 inches, and I would really like my hat to be a little bit longer. So you can continue to, to look at your, your hat and see where you would like it to sit. You can even try it on with the needle still attached. Here I've knit a little bit more and I can see that I like this length a little bit better. You can also follow and make sure that you're starting at the beginning uh, when you are ready to decrease your hat. So I'm making sure that I'm following where that original tail was that I was using. And now I'm ready to start decreasing this hat. So I'm going to take two stitches now and knit them together. This is going to be a tuck and then I'm going to do one stitch that's just regular and then I'm going to do two stitches and knit them together. And this is going to start decreasing the amount of stitches and making the hat smaller. So again, just continue to do this over and over again, decreasing two stitches and then knitting one. If you'd like and you're really anxious to get done, you can decrease faster. You'll just start to have these sort of big holes on the top of your head. So if you can do it slowly, it's a more gradual look. You might even see patterns and often you'll see patterns that only decrease once every five or 12 stitches. It just kind of depends and they'll start to create a really cool design where you see the line of decreased stitches happening. But this is your first knit hat, so we're gonna make it nice and easy for you. So you can just continue to knit one and then knit two together and continue to do that until you have so few amount of stitches on your needle that it becomes really difficult to knit. Usually I try to have about eight to 12 stitches on my needle before, before I decide that I'm done. And then I'll weave in the rest of the stitches with a tapestry needle and the long tail. All right, now I'm at the end and it's becoming really difficult to knit the hat. And so um, if I want, I can do something called magic loop where I pull the loop, the cable through, and I can try to knit a few more stitches together until I've got about eight stitches left. But again, if this becomes a little bit too challenging, you can also just use the tapestry needle in order to, to keep knitting. And you can do this at any step, any phase that you're ready. So once I'm at the end of my stitches, I've got about eight stitches left on my needle, I'm going to clip my thread tail. So I've got about 12 inches of that thread tail. And then I am going to put it on to a tapestry needle. And now I am going to make sure that I'm starting from the opposite side of where my tail is. And I'm just going to start to pull those stitches off from right to left onto the tapestry needle. So if you're familiar with purling, this is the position of the needle that you would do in order to purl a stitch. And after I remove all of those stitches, I can pull the yarn through, and then I'm going to pull that really nice and snug so that I don't have a hole on the top of the hat or a very large one. And now I'm going to start to weave the yarns in so that the hat stays intact. Some people like to knot this part and some people don't. If you ever want to use this yarn again and take it apart, then it's best if you don't do a knot. But if you feel pretty confident, you can create a knot like I did where you pull the yarn through, wrap the needle around a couple of times, and then you're just going to start to weave your tapestry needle into the purl stitches on the back of your hat. You can do this in a zigzag, you can do it in a circle. There are all sorts of different ways that you can do this. If you're really worried about the hat falling apart, you can split the ply of the yarn. So that means that instead of going through the center of the yarn, you split and have the needle go through the two layers of the yarn and that will make it so that it's a little bit stronger. And then you'll just continue to do this uh, with the rest of the tail of the yarn. If you've got a really long tail, after it feels secure, you can go ahead and cut it. And if you would like to add a pom-pom onto the top of your hat, you can also 
position the tail so that it's in the center of your the hole where the end of your hat is and then you can tie your pom-pom off with this long tail. I'm not going to put a pom-pom on mine here so I uh, am done with that top part. I'll clip it in just a moment and I'm also going to weave in the bottom tail of my hat. Now, some people will weave in at the beginning, but most people just wait to weave until the very end because you never know when you're gonna have to restart this. Uh, and so it's helpful if you can keep as much yarn as possible, especially if you've spent a lot of money or time on the yarn that you're working with and you want to be able to reuse it in case you don't like the fit of your hat, there's a good chance that it might be too small or too big. And so this process really happens towards the end. So again, I'm just weaving in the ends of my yarn into the hat. Once you are all done, you can clip the tails of your yarn. I'm going to leave my top one on just in case I decide to add a pom-pom onto it. Turn it right side out and try your hat on. I hope this project went well for you and it makes you feel more comfortable with knitting.